Tequila, that little golden liquid that many of us associate with a good night out. Did you know that in America, over 50 million liters of tequila are drunk every year? There are lots of interesting facts about this little liquid, but one in particular has something to do with where I am right now, here in the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History, in the largest bat collection in the world. And I know just the right person to talk to. Ah yeah, the tequila connection. Uh, it involves this little bat right here, Leptonicterus nivalis, which is a species of nectar-feeding bat that occurs in Mexico and migrates up into the southwestern U.S. every year. Tequila liquor is made from agave plants, and this little species of bat, Leptonicterus, has evolved to feed on the nectar of agave flowers. And in the process of doing that, it pollinates agaves, moves the pollen from one plant to the other by sticking its long muzzle and a very long tongue, which can be up to about a third the body length of the bat, wow. into that flower, to the base of the flower where the nectar is, gets its meal, and in the process, the fur gets covered with pollen from the agave flower. The bat moves it on to the next flower as it goes about its nightly feeding. Okay, so do bats only pollinate Agave or, or the no, no, plant? they they pollinate lots of species of plants. This is just one species of nectar feeding bat, but there's actually hundreds of nectar feeding bats, and many of them feed on many many different species of, of flowers uh, during the course of the year. So probably all told, bats are responsible for pollinating thousands of species of plants. And so we know like you know, bees and birds might be attracted to flowers because of the way they smell. Do bats get attracted to the flowers in the same way? Yes, they do. So the, all of the flowers, all of the plants that are bat pollinated, the flowers are open at night. And they have a whole series of morphological adaptations to attract bats. Uh, since they're open at night, they're usually whitish or greenish in color. They're not very brightly colored like plants that are trying to attract uh, birds, for instance, are frequently red. Bat pollinated flowers, usually white, they usually do have an odor, but the odor is frequently not terribly attractive to us. It's not the normal sweet smelling flowers, roses and the like that we're used to. Rather, it has a very intense, almost overripe smell to it. Is it and, kind of like a rotten smell? Yeah, almost a rotten smell wow. in many cases. Well, so we definitely wouldn't want those in our house then. Yeah, they don't make great house plants. <laughs>